Weather forecasting. Predicting the weather. People have needed to predict the weather since the dawn of time. Hunting, farming, and all outdoor work depends on the weather, and folklore grew around the observations people made. Some of their observations were better than others. Modern forecasting relies on observation using various instruments and computer models. Um, we also use previous trends and patterns in the weather, and it can be accurate up to five days into the future. Meteorologists are scientists that study the causes of weather and they try to predict it. They use data that's been collected over the past 100 or more years to make their predictions. So when meteorologists say there's a 40% chance of rain today, what they really mean is that in the past, when the conditions were similar to what we have now, then it rained 40% of the time. So we predict that it's gonna rain 40% of the time now also. In this weather forecast for a town called Kadena, we can see a five-day forecast and we get information about what it's gonna be like in the morning and the evening with wind direction and speed. So here the wind on Tuesday is gonna be blowing from the northeast at five to 10 knots. And that's, what, that's the um, measurement for wind, the unit. Um, we have wind in the evening, and then we have a high and low temperature in Celsius and Fahrenheit. So the first box for Tuesday is nine degrees Celsius or 48 degrees Fahrenheit. And the high is 21 degrees Celsius or 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And they also give you information about sunrise and sunset, and it's in the 24-hour military clock. Weather instruments are very important. A thermometer measures temperature. A barometer measures air pressure. A rain gauge measures the amount of precipitation. An anemometer measures wind speed. And a weather vane finds the wind direction. And something called a psychrometer measures relative humidity. Remember, re relative humidity is the amount, the percentage of water vapor in the air compared to the saturation level at that given temperature. Weather technology is always changing. New technologies have made short range forecasting fairly reliable. So when meteorologists forecast the weather out to two or five days from now, we can be fairly certain that that's what the weather is going to be like. But beyond that, the technology is still advancing, so we're still getting better beyond five days. They're now working on a long, longer range predictions, and changes in technology are making this possible. And we're using more and more satellites and computers to make our weather predictions. Computers can take millions of pieces of data and process this information to make predictions. But predictions are only as good as the computer model. So in the past, when computers were first started, first started to be used, the predictions were only so reliable. But now that computer models are getting more advanced, we can be very certain that the information we get from these computer models is very accurate. Weather radar uses Doppler radar to track moving storms and precipitation. Next rad is the new generation of Doppler radar that tracks wind and precipitation. This allows tornadoes to be accurately tracked. And if you've ever driven on I-85 from Georgia to South Carolina, just when you go over the South Carolina border, there is a next rad Doppler radar station on the north side of the highway. And it looks just like this. And you can see it when you drive by and it's constantly gathering weather information and sending it to weather stations all over the country so that meteorologists can turn that data into a weather map that's helpful for us, like this one. Weather balloons are another instrument that can be used to gather weather information. They carry equipment up to 30 kilometers into the atmosphere. And a radiozon is attached to a weather balloon and it measures high up, it measures weather high in the atmosphere. And this equipment records data and sends it back to weather stations all over the country. So you can see the balloon is very large and it's got a tether attached to the bottom with a flag on it that makes it easy to see. And then the radiozond is this little 
computer on the bottom that gathers weather information and sends it to weather stations. A lot of data comes from satellites, and they take pictures of the Earth from outer space, and we know that satellites live in the exosphere. They can also collect information on temperature, cloud height, and moisture. And then the satellites send their data to weather stations all over the country, and it gets translated into weather maps that we can use. There are many different kinds of weather maps, and data from local weather stations from all over the country is collected to create national weather maps. This is an example of one from the Weather Channel, a typical weather map that you would see on the evening news also. This is a temperature map that shows current temperatures in areas all across the country. And the colors on the map are matched to colors on the temperature scale, and it gives you information about Fahrenheit and Celsius temperatures. Radar maps show precipitation, and the colors tell us the amount of precipitation from light to extreme and we can also see kind of in real time the precipitation moving across the weather map so you can get an idea of how much time you have before you should go inside to avoid getting rained on. This is a wind map that shows wind speed and direction. The little arrows tell you the direction the wind is blowing and the colors on the map tell you the wind speed. You find the color that's near your house and you match it to the color on the scale and it tells you information in um, miles per hour and meters per second. And an infrared satellite map shows you cloud top temperatures. This is a weather map that shows you the weather fronts and we know that fronts are where the boundary between two or more air masses and where there's a high pressure area it's indicated with a capital H and a low pressure area is indicated with a capital L and we know that wind always blows from an area of high pressure toward an area of low pressure and the lines that are on this map tell us everywhere on that line has the same air pressure. You can see that the pressure line that goes through Georgia is the same air pressure that makes its way through several different states. This is a visible satellite map, and it's a, an actual picture from outer space. So these clouds that you see are really what the clouds actually look like, and it's not an illustration. And this precipitation map shows you the amount of precipitation in inches, and the color changes as the precipitation gets heavier. And this map shows you relative humidity. And we know that relative humidity is the percentage of water vapor in the air compared to the total amount of water vapor that the air can hold at a given temperature or the saturation level. Isobars show areas of equal pressure. The innermost circles will be the low or high pressure area. On this map, the innermost circle is a low pressure area and then everywhere on this line has the same pressure. Everywhere on this line has the same pressure. And we can see that the numbers get larger as they go out. So it's, getting, it's moving towards a high pressure area as you go away from the low center. Isotherms are lines that show areas of equal temperature. Isotherm maps show where temperatures are relatively high and low and also where temperature changes are gradual or dramatic over a distance. Um, the National Weather Service produces weather maps based on information gathered from about a thousand weather stations all across the country. And they use symbols on the maps so that they don't have to write paragraphs. And we see a circle that, with a fraction shaded in that shows us the amount of cloud cover. And this could be um, placed anywhere on the map. There's a flag that comes off of the circle that tells us the direction of the wind with lines on the end of the flag that tell us about the wind speed. We also have information about temperature, the type of precipitation, the dew point, and then other abbreviations such as air pressure. Weather map symbols are fun to read. These are symbols that you can see on a weather map. 
and the arrows or bumps point in the direction the front is moving. So for this cold front, we can see that in this case, it's moving from west to east, as is this warm front, a stationary front that's just sitting, a warm front and a cold front together, making rainy weather with stratus clouds. So it uses a combination of warm and cold. And then a, an occluded front gets an alternating triangle and semicircle, and it gets a special color purple. Be sure to study the different instruments that we use to measure weather for the test.